What makes the Cubs fan base so special, and why is it a perfect place for a superstar? You are Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Sam Olber, and I'm a lifelong fan, taking my passion into a discussion with you on all things Cubs. Thank you for being part of the show and making Locked On Cubs your first listen today. And the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day, like the video, and comment anything below. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Download the app today and use code LOCKDOWNMLB to win $50 instantly when you play your first $5 lineup. Prize Picks, run your game. Welcome in, everybody. It's a solo Sam day, a a Sam soapbox day, if you will, but we're going to change it up. It's going to be a positive soapbox. Is that an oxymoron? I don't know, um, but I, uh, I'm not going to rant today. In fact, I'm going to celebrate today. Uh, I think everyone deserves a little bit of a change of a tone. This is kind of similar to the crown jewel episode we did. I don't remember a week or two ago um, that Matt and I did, but it's different because uh, – Fans were just a part of the crown jewel conversation. This is just strictly talking about fan bases and why I think the Cubs are such a special fan base. And, 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 you know, you guys know me pretty well by now, especially those who listen every day. And I think you guys can tell, you know, when I do fan duel ads or whatever, you know, the Cubs are my number one, always have been, always will be, but I also love sports like every sport. Uh, um, and, and I follow a lot of them intensely, you know, whether it's the bears, whether it's Illinois basketball, football, whether it's Messi and soccer, or whether it's just the NBA in general. I mean, I love, like I, I'm counting down the days to watch the NBA. Uh, I, I would go as far as to say it's probably too much in my life. And I, I'm working on that for sure. But what it allows me to do is really put into perspective when I cover a team like the Cubs and then look at other teams. And of course I'm looking from afar and when it comes to fan bases, everybody's going to think theirs is the best. There's implied bias there. And this is no different than that, but I watch a lot of teams. I watch a lot of atmospheres. I'm all over social media. Like, you know, I, I think I'm a decent person to have this discussion with. And for a long time now, since I've been old enough to really know about these things, it's always stuck out to me, the Cubs fan base and, and what it means to people. And, you know, they had that slogan a couple of years ago, whenever it was that, you know, quote, it's different here, you know, end quote. And, and it really is like that, that, that isn't just jargon, you know, that's, that's real. Um, and when I talk to Cub fans at events and, um, you know, I talk to people and I interact on social media, one of the reasons why I don't really get too angry when people get, get after me at social media or whatever is because, I, I respect that they love the Cubs probably just as much as I do. So we might disagree on the path, but but we all want the same ending, which is the Cubs to win another championship. And so I just want to get into that and, and talk about, I think there's some interesting conversations there. Um, you know, when, when, when you're talking about a, a great fan base, you know, I, I think about, you know, loyalty. I think about tradition. I think about venue. I think uh, what it means to people when they win all those things, can they create a great atmosphere? Is it, is it legitimately difficult to go into their building and win? Is it, you know, baseball is obviously not like football and basketball when it comes to that, of course. Um, but like a good example is like the Dodgers. The Dodgers are looked at as a, you know, a, a one of the top crown jewel franchises. And, you know, they, they played a Tuesday afternoon NLCS game or Monday. It was a Monday afternoon uh, NLCS game. And even Justin Steele tweeted about it. that, that There was empty seats there. Uh, there was empty seats there. It was a very mediocre atmosphere for, from afar. And it, it just, it, it made me think about Wrigley. And, and and if the Cubs were playing the Dodgers or the Cubs were playing the Mets in an NLCS game two in the middle of the day, middle of the week, everything stops. Everyone knows. Who cares what your daily ob obligations are? You got to get to Wrigley Field. You got to get to Wrigley Field if it's a 3 a.m. start. Who cares about 3 p.m.? How about 3 a.m.? That it would be there and it would be ruckus. It would be, it would be a, an incredible atmosphere that you probably remember forever. You know, I still remember the the two games I was at in the 2003 playoffs and I will, and I was, you know, nine years old and I will remember those for the rest of my life because you can't re recreate that stuff. And that's Wrigley and that's the Cubs and that's this fan base, you know, but the interesting question that comes up and, and we get this a lot and I've even discussed this a lot is, is there a, a line where you become too loyal where you start to enable 
ownership with your loyalty, meaning, hey, we don't have to go out and put out a great product because we know if we're just average, people are going to sell out the the stadium. And my short answer to that is 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 no, that I don't believe in that. I, I've gotten arguments about this where I've been on the other side, like my my buddy Nick has diehard as uh, is, is a diehard Bears fan and has um, uh, season tickets to the Bears. And I used to get on them when they were bad. Like, why are you going to the game? You're enabling, you're perpetuating the problem, whatever. And I realized that's just, that's a soft take because it's like people, you, you can't tell people what's fun and what isn't fun. Like Nick, same friend, went to like one of the last Cubs games of the year because him and his wife and friends and family wanted to go to the game because going to Wrigley is fun. And, and that's fun for them. Watching the Cubs is fun. Just because I'm somebody that's like, hey, if they're not good, I don't want to go. That doesn't mean everyone's going to be like that. And a huge part of that is Wrigley. It's such a cathedral. It's such a venue where you're, you're, it doesn't matter if if you say you're not going to go to a game. How are you going to tell the out-of-town people? You know, Cubs are hosting the Tigers. You're going to you're gonna have thousands of Tiger fans. Like, that place is always going to do well no matter what because of Wrigley. I do think Cubs – the, the Cubs do a really good job, Cub fans, of holding players accountable. Um, I think marquee subscriptions have been down. I don't know that factually whatsoever, but, you know, it just feels with the spending and the murmurs out there that, you know, I don't think marquee's done as well as, as maybe the Ricketts family thought it would. I could be totally wrong on that, but I, I, I don't think so. Um, I think fans express their displeasure in, in, in different ways. And, you know, when, when things aren't going well at Wrigley, you'll hear boo birds. Like, I don't think they're loyal to a fault is, is what I'm saying. I think the Cub fans – are the perfect amount of of loyal when they need to be harsh when they when they have to be, but but it, it's one of the reasons why I think Wrigley Field and the Cubs are a perfect place for a star. I just want to read uh, some attendance figures just to go back on the back last point. So top six in attendance this year, Dodgers won. Um, you know, also a little deceiving. They have you know the Dodgers and a lot of these other teams hold more people than Wrigley, um, so they're going to have more people. But Dodgers, Yankees, Phillies, Padres, Braves, Cubs. So the Cubs were sixth, but of course the Cubs were the only team in the top six that uh, were not a playoff team. So, you know, shows your loyalty there. But I don't like if the Cubs were one on that list, that'd be kind of crazy, but that's not even really mathematically possible with how much more the Dodgers can hold. But the point I want to get to is number one, I don't think you can be too loyal. Like I, I don't think that's a problem um, with the Cubs fan base. And, and, and I just think that, Chicago and the Cubs specifically is such a, because the fan base is what it is. It is such a perfect place for a superstar to go. And if I were an agent of Shohei Otani's or Juan Soto's or whoever is available, I would be advising them to go to the Cubs. And I'm going to tell you why. Now I understand, of course, money is the biggest thing and the weather and if the wind's blowing in, I think that was a fluke. So let's 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 take that away for the for the sake of this episode. Let's let's use Juan Soto as an example. Okay. Juan Soto most likely is going to resign with the Yankees. If he resigns, to me, sports is about legacy. That that's all that's all it's about for me. Like it's about winning and it's about legacy for, for an individual player. Like if you're a star, you go to the Yankees, you go back to New York for play with the Yankees. No matter what you do. You're always going to be looking up at somebody, right? Might, might be your own teammate, Aaron Judge. But if if it if it's not Judge, it was Jeter. If it's not Jeter, it's it's '56 when when Mantle uh, uh, won the Triple Crown. And if it's not that, it's DiMaggio's 50 game hit streak. I think that was '41. And if it's not that, it's Lou Gehrig's 100 billion RBIs. And if it's not that, it's Babe Ruth. Like they they've seen it all. They've done it all, right? But then. You say, okay, well, then he could just go to the Mets then. But then the Mets don't have the cachet that the Cubs do. They're still the little brother in their city, right? The the Cubs are the best of both worlds because they're still a big-time organization. They're still a big-time franchise. But they also share that the, their expectations aren't super, super high. I mean, right now, our, our, our modern heroes are just all the guys that won in 2016. And with all due respect to a Chris Bryant, an Anthony Rizzo, a Javier Baez, there's no comparison between those guys and a guy like Juan Soto. Imagine if Juan Soto came here, came here and just had 10 normal Juan Soto seasons, and one of them ended up with a world championship. He would be you know, celebrated as may maybe, with all due respect to the great Ernie Banks, maybe the greatest Cub of all time. Like, it, it's not that... High of a standard for a guy like that, but 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 the intensity is still the same as a as a New York. The passion is still the same, and so I just 
it, to me, it just seems like such a perfect fit. The only thing I could equate it to would be like the Knicks in basketball, right? The Knicks haven't won in a while. They have an amazing fan base. They're a huge market. And you see what's happening right now with Brunson and those guys, like they're getting so appreciated where it's like, you know, the Lakers have seen everything that that's a Kobe town, you know, and, and the Celtics. Right. And it's like, you look at a team like the Dodgers with Otani, it, it's great that Otani's there and I'm, I'm glad he's having a great time, but like, he's not getting appreciated there the way he should. He just isn't. He just isn't. I believe he would be appreciated more and baseball would be better if he was in Chicago. I could be totally wrong on that, but that's just what I believe. You know, uh, the, the people have said that about Michael Jordan, where it's like, if Michael Jordan played for the Lakers, you know, he might've not been appreciated the way he was in Chicago. I, I just, that's just what I believe. Uh, um, I, I, I was born long after, um, the 1985 bears. And I can name you, I can name you their, their front four of, uh, um, uh, McMichael and Dent and, and Perry Hampton, their linebackers, Wilson, Singletary, Marshall, not because I followed or I look it up on YouTube because my dad never stopped talking about it because just that one team meant that much to him. Um, that's the power that you have in this city. If you could find a winner, because to me, it's one of the greatest sports cities in the world, but it's one of those greatest sports cities in the world that just hasn't had a ton of success. I don't, I'm not super into the hockey realm. Um, I guess that's on me. So excluding that, I mean, you know, you have your nineties bulls, you have your 85 bears, you have your Oh five white Sox, you have your 16 Cubs. You know what I mean? That's what it is. And so it's like, when you take the passion of this fan base and how hungry they are for a winner, I just, I think it's such a great place. And that's why I pound the table so much in frustration when the Cubs aren't in these superstar talks and why I wanted Otani so bad. I just, I truly believe um, that it's different here. I mean, I remember, I remember when I went to a game uh, just this last June, it was June one, there was a three and a half hour rain delay on a Saturday night. Uh, and, and it was like raining sideways when the game started. It was the game Suzuki dropped the fly ball and then uh, hit the grand slam. It was electric in there. It was awesome. It wasn't, you know, it was probably like three quarters full, two thirds full, but it was still electric. It was as good of an atmosphere as it was the other day in LA. I'll tell you that much. You just can't replicate that. You can't replicate that type of passion and loyalty. And I just think it's a great place to play and a great place to, to become a star. I mean, Ian Happ, you know, there's, there's rumors going around that the Cubs talked about him waving his no trade clause. He said, no, I bet you one of the reasons he said no is because he loves being a part of Chicago. It's great to be great here. You know, that's what it's about. How awesome is it to be awesome in a city like that? And I just think um, the Cubs and their amazing fan base are at the top of the list. And let me tell you, don't think for a second that I don't see it on a day-to-day -day basis or Matt doesn't see it. I mean, we have this show and people still listen when the team's not good. People are still passionate. Like I've, I've gained even more respect and more admiration for Cub fans since, you know, we've had this show because it's impossible to ignore. It's impossible not to see it. And, and it's, uh, it's an amazing thing. And I know we're very grateful and, and hopefully the Ricketts are really grateful and, and work really, really hard um, to, to produce a winner here. I think this is a fun conversation. We're going to, we're going to continue it. Let's talk about some, some other teams or other franchises that you could compare the Cubs to in terms of fan bases uh, coming up next. This episode is brought to you by prize. Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Get in on the daily action with your friends, become part of the Prize Picks community today. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn 10 bucks into 1,000. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Want to play prize picks alongside Drewski, Joe Budden, and MMA champ Sean O'Malley? You can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries of some of the biggest names in the prize picks community each week. Download the prize picks app today. Use code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. That's code locked on MLB on prize picks for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Prize picks run your game. We are back here on Locked on Cubs, and I just want to continue this conversation. I, I we'll, we'll move on soon. I don't know if people are um, tired of this or not. I just think it's fun every now and then to change it up and talk about, um, you know, these fan bases. And to me, you know, I look at the Cubs. I really do believe the Cubs fan base. And again, this is all subjective. There's no metric for this. There's no 
there's there's no number. That's what makes it so special. You can't define fan bases by WRC plus or war or stuff like that. It's all subjective. Every fan base is going to think they have the best fans. That's that's just how it goes. Uh, but I do believe Cub fans are are different. I do believe it's different here. And so I thought I was thinking about for the show. Just did a thoughtful ex- exercise. Just wanted to think about some some fan bases I think that are similar. And I, I landed in baseball. Um, so so the, I wanted to put the Phillies there because I think the Phillies create as good of an atmosphere as any for a big home game at Citizens Bank. I really do. Like I, I would go as far as to say that's almost, if not as as loud as Wrigley is. But I think they're a little bit too much with the booing. Like I think it's it, it's 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 almost a little too much there. Um, so I landed on the Red Sox. I landed on the Mets. I think the Mets fan fans are really getting a chance to showcase themselves. And then I think the Padres. I think those would be the three uh, in baseball that really stick out. But again, unlike the Cubs, like the Padres, that's all they have. You know what I mean? Like the Cardinals, even if the Cardinals are on there, like, you know, they don't really have any other major options in those cities. You know, there's no chargers in San Diego. There's no Rams in St. Louis anymore. So it's like, that's some, one of the only games in town. Um, uh, but they're in there. The one that's always stuck out to me, I think basketball is pretty, pretty big marquee. Like, I think it's pretty much the Knicks, the Lakers and the Celtics in one of those three orders. You know, I don't know. I could be wrong on that, but like, you know, that, that like LA is a Laker town, you know, I don't know. That one seems fairly easy for football. The, the fan base that always has stuck out to me, even since I've been a kid, but it really opened up to me the last five ish years or so is the Steelers. I just think the Steelers, like I was in LA a couple years ago, when they were and not not for this reason, but they happened to be playing the the Chargers in LA, they took over the city. I mean, it was all black and yellow. Uh, you go to airports, you go to different places. I always see people with Steelers stuff on. Um, I, I'm I'm a fan of that organization. I really am, um, and I think their fans are are electric. You know, another thing, and I th- I think I mentioned this in the beginning. If I didn't, I didn't. Another big telltale for me of fan bases is how well do you travel, right? How, how well do you make your presence known in a, in a, in a different venue, you know, and the Steelers travel as well as anybody. Uh, they, they really travel well there. Uh, I think the Packers have a really good fan base, but again, kind of the only game in town for them. You know, I know Packers, Brewers, Bucks, but like just, I, I just mean city wise, Green Bay, uh, they're up there. Um, you know, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Like, I, I, I personally, like, I wasn't overly impressed with the Yankees' turnout. I think the Yankees are in, in a situation where, like, their fans just expect greatness, and so that 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 sometimes becomes challenging. It becomes difficult. You know, um, you know, their atmosphere, uh, you know, against Cleveland, it was like it was just like well, we expect to win this. You know, so it is what it is. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I really feel like the point of this episode is just like. I, I I think the Cubs have amazing fans and we deserve a consistent winner like we had from from 15 to 18. And 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 just as important, maybe not just as important, but just under that, we deserve a guy to just rally around that's a star. And and we make him and he makes us. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, those early years with Sosa, like one of the reasons why, you know, that Sosa event, we talk about Sosa is because I I still remember those days. It was that important to people, you know, when he would come to the plate. It was. Whether you like Sosa or not, or you agree with the things he did or not, one thing you won't disagree with is that at that time, it was electric. It was electric. It went from Walter Payton to Michael Jordan to Sosa in, in the late 90s. It was just, it was different. It was different. And, and and the you know the Cubs as a whole in 15 and 16, they had that. And then it kind of faded towards uh 2018. And whatnot, but um, I just think it's really interesting, and it's just like I said, it's just it's a really, really fun community to be a part of. And I'm trying to think, you know, I had I, I had Steelers written down here, um, I had Packers written down here, um, I had Red Sox, I had Phillies, I had Padres. Those were really, really the ones. And then, of course, I, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I could be wrong. Like I feel like like OKC, like the Thunder, like those teams have a pretty good fan base. But again, that's just because like that's. That's their thing. It's like, it's like almost like a different category. You know what I mean? There's no Oklahoma City baseball team, or you know, and those type of things. So I'm not trying to not trying to insult any fan bases by any means. I'm just giving my food uh, for thought. Let's talk about a little baseball, little Gold Glove situations uh, when we come back. This episode is brought to you by Hims. 
Guys, sometimes intimate moments happen spontaneously, and we always want to be ready so we can perform in the bedroom. HIMSS provides access to treatments that can help you stay hard and last longer, giving you that boost of confidence so you can be ready whenever the mood strikes. HIMSS is changing men's health care by providing you with access to affordable sexual health treatments from the comfort of your couch. The process is 100% online, so there's no need for uncomfortable doctor's visits. Start your free online Visit today at hymns.com slash locked on. That's hymns.com, H I M S.com slash locked on for your personalized ED treatment options. The products mentioned are chewable compounded products, which are not approved by or verified for safety or effectiveness by the FDA. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate. Restrictions do apply. See website for details and important safety info. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plans. That's hims.com, H-I-M-S.com, slash locked on. We are back here on Locked On Cubs, and we're going to close out today's show with just mentioning the Gold Glove candidates that were announced uh, earlier this week, and the Cubs had two. Uh, Ian Happ, for the third straight season, has been uh, mentioned among the finalists in left field. And he had won the award the prior two years. So we will see what happens there. And then Dansby Swanson, uh, also among finalists at shortstop. Uh, Nico Horner was probably the guy that you know was left off that probably should have been a finalist. I really don't put much into this. Um, you know, it's through Rawlings. Uh, I, I just it doesn't mean a whole lot to me. Uh, if I'm being genuinely honest, I know it probably does to the players. I just go by the eye test and then a couple of the metrics. Obviously I thought Nico Horner was probably a top three defender at the position this year, but it's not something that really impacts me or affects me. And that's, and that's, that's saying something. Cause I always will defend guys. Like I, I, I almost think, you know, I, I was frustrated. I thought Imanaga didn't get nearly enough pub for the season that he had. And I'm really interested to see we'll hear, where he'll finish in the Cy Young voting. But the Horner thing, it just does, it just didn't pop off my page as, oh my gosh, I'm, I can't believe it. Like it is what it is. Uh, but he he probably should have been there. I would not be surprised if Dansby and Hap repeated. Uh, Dansby was tremendous. I I think Horner and Swanson, if I remember correctly, got off to slow starts defensively, and then like the last four or five months was flawless, especially on Swanson's end. And and as I said on the show before, I I thought Ian Hap had his best year. Um, anecdotally through the eye test in left field. I, I thought he had a better year this year than he did the prior two years. So I would have no problem with him um, winning the gold glove award. First of all, I wouldn't have a problem with it anyway. He's a cub. I want it. I want what's best, but I, I would be, uh, I would not be surprised at all. So we'll see what uh, happens there. I thought Michael Bush had a good year at first base. He didn't make it. Um, I just, for me, the awards just don't really hit hit hard for me when, 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 when we're not great. Like I just, you know, I, I want to be competing for MVPs. I want guys that are in the MVP conversation. I want guys that are in the side conversation. Um, that that's, that's what I'm looking for. Um, I I'm, I'm curious to see what Imanago will finish. I, I hope it's at least top five. Um, and next year, you know, if we could have a top five MVP candidate, there's a really, really good chance we'll play postseason baseball. I don't want to be talking about gold gloves at the end of the year. If that's all we're talking about. Probably wasn't a great season. You know, let's talk about MVPs. Let's talk about silver sluggers. Let's talk about Cy Youngs. Let's talk about saves leaders. You know, that's that's where you want to be because those results um, in wins. So we'll see. I would I would not be surprised if both guys repeated um, as Gold Glove Award winners. Uh, we will monitor that. Matt will be back for Thursday. I don't know. We we might talk uh, we might talk a little Q rating. Talk about guys like who has like great approval rating with the Cubs, where they could do no wrong in Cubs fans' eyes. Who are guys that are on a shorter leash? I think that's a an interesting conversation to get into. Uh, we're going to get pretty close here soon to, to to reporting some things. You know, um, you know, we'll we'll start to hear things. The rumor mill will start to kick up here as we get closer and closer to the World Series, and then of course the Bellinger uh, opt out situation hovers over. Um, a major impact for the uh, Cubs 2024 into 25 offseason. Thank you so much for checking out this edition of Lockdown Cubs. You give us 20 to 30 minutes. We'll give you all things Cubs with a laugh or two along the way. Be sure to hit subscribe on YouTube, smash the like button for the algorithm, and leave a five-star review on Apple, Spotify, and everywhere you get your podcast. I'm Sam Olber, and this is Lockdown Cubs.